Welcome back to Amplified. There's a legal battle brewing in New York over a rule that we recently told you about here on Amplified. It allows people who are looking to become U.S. citizens to vote in local elections. The law will give more than 800,000 people with green cards and authorization to work in the U.S. the ability to cast a ballot in elections like the mayoral race and the election of the public advocate. This could happen as early as next year. Last month, state lawmakers filed suit to block it. This month, political commentator D. Roy Murdoch and three other black New Yorkers took their fight to court as well. They say the new rule violates the state constitution. They also say that it will force officials to revamp ballots, dilutes the votes of U.S. citizens, and forces candidates to change the way that they campaign. They're now hoping a court injunction will block the city from implementing the law. But Mayor Eric Adams says the city will not back down. I talked to former Brooklyn City Council person Carlos Menchacha about this issue. Here's what he had to say about the law and its potential impact. Let me play the devil's advocate here, Carlos. And, and I got to say, welcome to Amplify. This is just astounding to me. Thank you. I, I want to start no off, though, you know, kind of kind of poking this a, a little bit. Some have said that a measure like this discourages people from actually seeking citizenship because they get the right to vote, which is the right you get with citizenship. Is there any evidence of that? Uh, absolutely not. Those who want to become citizens are struggling right now in the uh, system that has yet to be reformed and has, is asking to be reformed. And until that happens, so many of us on the city level, municipal government, are trying to figure out how we enfranchise our immigrant neighbors to ensure that they have access to democracy. This is about democracy. And so almost a million people in New York City in the next election in co a couple years will be able to vote. And that's what we're focused on right now. Uh, and so I think that those are the kind of things that people say who are xenophobic and really don't understand what's happening in the minds and hearts of so many people who have been essential workers on the front lines, for example, here in New York City, who want a voice mm. on who leads them here in the city of New York. I Almost a million people, 11% of the population um, is undocumented in New York City, first of all. That's its own uh, conversation. But I'm curious, how does this work? Um, being able to enfranchise a huge swath uh, of the population there. Tell us about the residency uh, requirement and, and how, all this, how all this works. Yeah, so this bill is really designed to focus on those who have legally legal permanent status, and that allows them to work here in the city of New York legally. Uh, all of them will be eligible to register to vote in this new municipal government uh, voting process. Uh, and these are dreamers. These are, these are people who have been working, uh, delivering our food, many of them day laborers in the city of New York and have been paying taxes. Uh, these are all myths uh, when people say they don't pay taxes or, or it's gonna uh, you know, discourage them from becoming citizens. That's absolutely not, not the case. They are in our government already uh, taking so many opportunities to engage in PTAs, uh, in their schools, in their children's schools. Uh, they are part of the fabric of our city. And so we are now at the stage of implementation. So this week, the law became uh, official, and now the city is going to have to create a process and implement this and create an education civic engagement plan. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping we all turn our eyes toward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just want to clarify here that, you know, we are talking about 800,000 people who are documented but not citizens. Documented That's but right. not citizens, um, which is a, a, an, an interesting limbo that people have been in, to your point, paying taxes, working, being the backbone uh, of, of our communities and not being able to have to participate, you know, and to be able to have a right to vote. What gets interesting now is that you're adding a big group of people into the electorate. And so now we get into the politics and the politics get really <laughs> personal get and, you know, re really hardcore New York City, right? You from Brooklyn. So some African-American right. leaders have said that this could shift the voting power away from black voters. Is there any validity to that? 
Well, we heard those arguments on the floor of the city council just weeks ago when we finally put this to a vote. And I think what I learned, uh, and as a legislator, openly gay, uh, Mexican American with immigrant roots, uh, so much of what I'm trying to learn is how we can really build bases uh, within our communities that have the similar issues uh, to fight together. And I think what this is gonna force us to do is to really take that issue of diluting bases, power bases, and say, how do we grow them? You know, I've never felt, felt like power was finite. Power is infinite. And when we think about democracy, the more, you pe the more people get en enfranchised, the more we can work together to solve some issues. The issues that are, are core to immigrant communities are very similar to the black community, to Latino communities, to women, et cetera. That's what we need to focus on. And so I think that there's a lot that we can do right now in this moment where there is fear and, and really hit that with love and compassion and really think through coalition-based building. That's what I'm, I'm hoping we can do. Uh, but those, those things do exist in our communities, those fears that you talked about. Mm -hmm. I started out highlighting how other major cities really haven't wanted to touch this issue with a 10-foot pole, it seems, right? And right. in New York City, uh, the mayors, de Blasio, didn't say anything really, didn't act on the measure. Uh, brand new mayor, Eric Adams, also didn't veto it, but um, has, you know, questioned whether the city council can actually make this move. So it sounds a little bit more like um, process of a question there, but he didn't get in the way of it. Is this a, you know, have the mayors endorsed, have had a fulsome endorsement of the measure, or are they just like not willing to take on the fight and kind of not trying to, you know, get into the weeds here? You know, Mayor Adams has been a big supporter of not just this fight, but immigrant communities uh, across the city. And so what I really believe is happening here is that there is this conversation that needs to happen, that black communities across the entire city um, are really trying to ask themselves, how do we maintain a sense of power? And I think what we can do is really hit that straight on and say, how do, how do we come together? Um, and I think this is where Mayor Adams really listened to so many leaders and finally made a choice very recently, yes, as, as of yesterday, and said, I'm gonna be supporting this, this bill. Did not veto the bill. The bill is now fully official. Uh, and so I think now the hard work becomes uh, the, the implementation of, of this bill. Uh, and so I, I think he's gonna be putting all of his might within the administration to ensure that everything goes right. Uh, you've heard some issues of the Board of Elections here in the state of New York and how they've been terrible and need a massive upgrade and reform. Uh, so we'll be working with the state uh, to ensure that we get all the reforms necessary to take this on. We have a we have a year and change to make this happen. And so I hope all the smart minds come together and make sure that democracy works better. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, thinking about the fact that redistricting actually, you know, kind of counts immigrants when we're trying to redistrict. And yeah, is it a logical conclusion that they should also be able to, to vote writ large? And I, I wonder if what New York City is doing here actually is a pathway to allow non-citizen voting beyond local elections. Well, I, I'm glad you said that because I think what you're, you're saying is absolutely right. The census has been such a huge part of what we, we in the city have been working on, and we saved some representation, and uh, the census was not easy during COVID, and so many of the people that we engaged were the hard-to-reach communities. Uh, I was chairing a task force on the census and non-English speakers. We're not even talking about just immigrants, but non-English speakers, people who are not necessarily engaged in government activities uh, were, were all part of who we were trying to reach. Those souls that were counted by the census are now part of the redistricting conversation. And so they should have an opportunity to vote for their local municipal government. Now, what we'd love to do is really change this conversation and bring it to the state but not just in New York, across the entire country. Because when people can feel connected to government and we can actually elect people that look like the electorate, beautiful things happen. Uh, and I'm part of that, being the first Mexican-American elected in the state of New York, 
uh, has been such a beautiful thing uh, to connect communities that have never seen themselves inside of government. It's very powerful. Uh, and so this is this is the journey uh, that we're going to take up to the state and across this country. Former New York City Councilman Carlos Menchaca, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Amplified. Thank and you. what an interesting win for you. We will continue to watch how all this plays out this cycle.